The City of Dunellen Special City Council meeting. It's March 28th, 2022. Please make note, it is 535. Would y'all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice. Remain standing. Is there anyone in attendance that would like to start us off with a short prayer or, or some words of inspiration? Okay, Councilman Williams. Council, Councilman Williams will be very glad. I've been waiting for this moment. Father God, we come to you to give you thanks for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us, because we know that all things belong to you. We pray, God, for knowledge. We pray for wisdom. We pray for understanding. In Jesus' name, we pray. We know that we can do any, nothing without you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Everyone have a seat. <laughs> okay, Ms. Soda, we are ready for roll call. Mayor White. Present. Vice Mayor Hanchar is actually absent. She was uh, going to attempt to join us by Zoom, but it doesn't look like she's um, in yet. She uh, had a last minute family emergency that she had to go out of town for. Uh, Councilwoman Williams? Here. Councilwoman Kenny? Here. Councilwoman Cubbage? Present. Troy Slattery, Public Works Manager? Here. Jan Smith is absent. Georgina said, Community Development Manager. Here. Michelle Leonard, Assistant Clerk. Here. Julie Donowski, Records Clerk. Here. Chief McQuaig. He's in the park. Okay, thank you. Lieutenant Yawks. Here. And Attorney Hand is attending by Zoom. The good. agenda for this meeting was posted on the city's website, City Hall Bulletin Board, on Monday, March 21st, 2022 and amended on March 22nd to add agenda item number one. Thank you very much, Ms. Sodom. The next thing, uh, looking at the agenda, council, uh, does any council member want to make a comment on tonight's agenda before we get started? No. Okay, please note, council has no comment on tonight's agenda. Now we open it up to public comments, as we always do. Uh, this is an opportunity for the public to speak to any topic of your choosing that is not on tonight's agenda. It's your opportunity to bring forth new ideas, old ideas, suggestions, whatever you would like to do. This is your opportunity. Um, Ms. Odom, has anybody signed up? No, sir. Okay. Is there anyone sitting in attendance that would like to take this opportunity to address council about any subject that is not on the agenda? Uh, gentlemen, this is, I believe this is your opportunity. Okay. Please, yes, please come up to the uh, um, microphone there, the podium and give us your name and address Please uh, speak loudly, and uh, this is recorded, and there's people listening on Zoom okay. all over the nation, so you're under pressure. No, <laughs> not really. I've been under a lot less, a lot more <laughs> pressure than that. <laughs> My name is uh, James Hughes. I'm the Wishful Master at English Lodge, Masonic Lodge, Masons. We currently um, acquired Dunellen Lodge over here at 20751 Powell Road. Our lodge last two weeks has voted to sell that building over there. And we would like to give Dunellen the opportunity if they would like to purchase that building for your new, for a police department. Uh, we have the blueprints. We have the uh, paperwork. That if you'd like to have it, look at it. But uh, we'd like to bring it up to Dunellen and see if y'all would be interested in it. Very good. Sir, what was the address again? 20751 Powell Road. Right next to that little white church right there. Does anybody know what a mason is? 
Yes. Thank you. So let's just ask you a couple just preliminary questions. This is sure. the first time it's coming in front of council. Um, so you have a building, a current building that's there on yep. a lot. Yes, sir. Correct. So the first things that council would ask is what is the size of the building and how much parking do you have attached to the building? We got uh, 5,580 square feet of building space for the kitchen, lodge room, men and women's restroom, storage uh, um, building out back, and we got uh, storage inside the building and attached to the dining room kitchen area, which is a full kitchen. Um, we have another room that is attached to it. And the parking space, it can accommodate four to five handicapped parking spots up front, and it can accommodate 20 to 25 in the back. And how old approximately is the building, would you say? The building was built in 2002. No, 2000. 2000, I'm sorry. And has your association come up with a price that they're uh, willing to put it on the market for? Yes, sir. We have 500000 500000 Okay, Council, I've asked uh, some of the basic questions. If Ms. Kenny or Ms. Williams, Ms. Covich, if you have any yeah, questions. I have one question. Uh, the parking lot you referred to, um, uh, it's unknown to me. Is it paved or not paved? Not paved. The not very paved. front has got a little paved there, but the back is uh, grassy. But when we hold meetings there, before we shut it down, uh, we park back there. And it does have city water and sewer. I've been in that building. It's been a while, but they had a wedding um, reception there. And yeah. it, to me, it didn't appear to be that large on the inside. Would That's be just more, me. It's been, I haven't been there in a while. Yeah. We'd be more than happy for anyone to go over and take a look at it. We'll be glad to open it up and give you a tour inside of it. You can just, I can leave you my name and phone number, my secretary. Uh, I'll leave you his name and phone number, and either one of us can go there and open the building up. Ms. Kenny, can I, I ask a question? question? Sure, please. To, uh, the police department. Can I? Yeah. Chief, have y'all been in that building before? Yes, I am. But I'm. Okay. All right. I just wanted to ask. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Ms. Kenny? Uh, I appreciate anyone coming forward and, and giving us a suggestion. But what we have learned, because this has been a very long and arduous process for us, is we would uh, require our due diligence and it does take some time. Is, is the property currently listed with a realtor? No, sir. We have three realtors is, uh, is looking at it. We're holding them off. I got to have my meeting tonight with my uh, lodge members and I'm going to suggest that we hold off for until our next state of communication meeting, which will be in two weeks from today. So I'm going to hold them off until y'all have, if y'all want to, if you're interested and have time to think about it. Probably the way this would work is council's hearing this now for the first time. So um, uh, after we uh, discuss this a little bit, I have a feeling council will direct staff to look into it and then come back to council with a report. Okay. And feasibility of it, yeah. um, time-wise, so you know what you're dealing with. Uh, our next council meeting is in April, Ms. Odom? Workshop is April 6th. April 6th. So staff would have, uh, if they could, and then we have another time-wise, and then we have a meeting five days later on the 11th. So, so whether it's the 11th or the 6th, we would ask staff to investigate it. Uh, Ms. Sid, our, uh, our uh, public planner would, would look at it and see the feasibility. So 
we would need that amount of time just to see if it, it fits what we're looking at. And then based on their recommendation, council would decide whether it's worthwhile pursuing it or not. Sure, absolutely, I agree. Uh, it, my lodge tonight, that we're gonna discuss it. We're gonna talk about Dunellen and the villagers. And I'm pretty sure a lot of the lodge members over there would like to wait until y'all give us a response. Uh, there's no real big hurry in us selling it. Uh, like I said, we got some stuff in there. We still got to move out. Uh, we got another weekend or two to move stuff out of the lodge area. Okay. What's your question? I'm sorry. I just want to give his name. Miss Williams, go ahead. Go ahead. What's, your, what's your name again? James Hughes, H-U-G-H-E-S. H-U-G-H-E-S. And I'm the Wishful Master at Inglis Lodge 324. In English? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Ms. Cubbage, did you have a um, Do you know what the um, assessed tax value is at this time? We pay no taxes over there. For uh, being a nonprofit organization, we don't pay taxes. Okay. Ms. Kenny, anything else? No, I appreciate it uh, coming forward and sure. giving us an opportunity. My pleasure. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Y'all have a good evening. We appreciate it. So, Ms. Uh, Council, um, is it okay to direct staff to look into it and give us a report at our April workshop or meeting? So, when you mean staff, are you talking about the police department? No, or staff. Are you talking about this staff? Okay. This staff. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Ms. Odom, based on what the timelines and whatever you can and can't do. Um, council would, would love a report and a recommendation of the feasibility at one of those two upcoming meetings. Okay. Okay, thank you. Anyone else that would like to speak at this time? Ms. Odom, is there anybody on Zoom that would like to speak? No, sir. Okay. Everybody has had their opportunity. We go to agenda item number one. It's agreement number 2022-09, contract for the sale and purchase of the surplus property located at 11808 North Ohio Street, bid 2021-02. Uh, I'm gonna turn this over to our city attorney, Andrew, to give a description of what this is all about. Andrew, are you are you hooked on? Yes, sir. Can you hear me well? Okay, great. Uh, this is a commercial contract for the Twin Property Investments Unlimited LLC uh, purchase of the uh, church property. Um, you'll see in here, uh, the contract is very similar to the, um, the first contract that was received. Uh, some of the areas requiring indemnif indemnification and so forth that I referenced have been crossed out. Um, everything that needs to be in this one is here, except um, there's a $10,000 deposit that will be held in escrow upon signing. And there's another $50,000 deposit to be made at some point, but that is not indicated in the contract. And so that just needs to be made uh, on lines either uh, 15 through 17 or 18 through 20. Uh, most likely at the completion of the due diligence period, which is 30 days. So I was just recommending checking that box on 16 and adding the $50,000 deposit. Other than that, the contract is ready to go. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Andrew, let me just clarify. So on page one, under number two, purchase price, line 16, mm -hmm. you're saying check that box and leave it blank because it's three days if left blank. Three days is fine. You just want to have a date in there that the next deposit will be made. So three days is fine. The 16 can be, be checked and then the $50,000 balance can be placed on line 17. Okay. On line 17, you're saying $50,000? Yes, just where that little dollar sign is on the side. Okay, Van, do you have anything to speak to where that's concerned? 
Because we are currently holding a $10,000 check, just so you know that. My name is Van Aiken. My address is 615 East Silver Springs Boulevard, Ocala. There was never any discussion of an additional deposit of $50,000 at the end of the inspection period. The $10,000 was the initial deposit that they had tendered a check to you that would be deposited upon acceptance of the contract. There was never a provision for an additional $50,000 deposit in any of the offers that had been given to you. They're willing, they've, they've got a, a bank approval letter. Uh, they've done some inspections. They'll finish up with that. There's no issue. I don't believe it's necessary for an additional $50,000 deposit to be deposited after the inspection, because after the inspection, we're going to go ahead and close it. Mandy, that's absolutely fine. If under F, that's just indicating the balance of cash to close is $60,000. Um, that's where that was coming from. It said 60, not, it might not have come over clearly over the microphone. Um, but if yes. that's just going to be the balance at, at, at the end, then that's fine too. I just wanted to make sure that that was the case given that there was a question on that earlier today. Okay, I think what Andrew's referring to is if you look at line 23 F, it says all deposits will be credited to the purchase price at closing. And that is listed at 60,000. So it, it indicates that there would be a total of a $60,000 deposit. Do you see that, Van? And that is- I'll read it as the balance to close. to be cash. Subject to, to be paid via wire transfer and it comes across at 60,000. It's just saying that the deposits would be credited toward the purchase price at closing, but it's really, I'll read it to be, and this is the way I've always interpreted it, that the balance to close, subject to adjustments and programs to be paid via wire transfer, and that's what I always thought was the balance to close was 60,000. Okay. Yes, and that's the way that it's currently written. I had just had a question today whether there was going to be a second deposit, and that was perhaps my misunderstanding based on uh, on conversation. So if there is not going to be a second deposit, then that, no changes need to be made and the contract is ready for execution. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. So, uh, Mr. Higgins, is that to your satisfaction? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Manny, while we're on the topic, we have to do whatever it takes to get better audio. I can barely understand. I can't hardly understand what Andrew's saying. Me either. So, I mean, we, we, have to, we have to be able to communicate better. Um, this is inadequate for counsel to listen to comments. It's, my hearing is not perfect, but my hearing is good enough, and I cannot figure out half of what he was saying. Okay, um, so we're good? All right. All right, let's take a look. Do we have any uh, comment by the uh, public at this time before it goes back in, in front of council for discussion. What this is, is we're talking about the real estate contract that is being uh, offered for the sale of the Soul Harbor Church and the other particulars that go with it. Any comment from the public? Anything on Zoom? No, sir. Okay. Okay. We're on item number two, the Yes. Okay. No, no, no. We're still on number one. We need to get a motion on that. Right. Okay. Do we have a motion? Uh, a motion for AGR 2020-09 contract for sale and purchase of surplus property located at 11808 North Ohio Street uh, bid 2021-2. Do we have a motion? So moved. We have a second. I'll second that. 
Any additional comment? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, four zero. Please make note that uh, Vice Mayor Henshaw is not part of the vote. Okay, Ms. Sotom, I think you go to a public hearing statement now. Yes. All persons wishing to address the city council will be asked to limit their comments to the specific subject being addressed. Public opinions and input are valued by the council. However, it is requested that comments are directed at specific issues rather than personal comments directed toward the council members or staff in order to foster mutual respect between council members and the public. Members of the public in attendance at public forums should listen courteously and attentively to all public discussions before the body and focus on the business at hand. They shall refrain from interrupting other speakers, making personal comments not germane to the business of the body, or otherwise interfering with the orderly conduct of meetings. Members of the public addressing city council and boards or commissions on a specific project or proposal are requested to disclose any personal interest or relationship and any business, professional, or financial interest with any individual, group, project, or proposal regarding the subject matter under review. Members of the public should always err on the side of more public disclosure, not less, in order to provide integrity to the public process. Very good. Again, this is an opportunity for the public to make additional, <coughs> additional comment before this goes to council for additional approval. Please note, no public comment. No we'll take not. public comment during the public hearing. During the public hearing? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, gotcha. So we're at agenda item number two. It is now 6.57. Mm, uh, hmm? 5.50. Oh, yeah, five, <laughs> I'm sorry. And I closed the regular meeting and opened the public hearing to discuss ordinance 2022-02, amending section 46-78 of the code of ordinances of the city. Then I want to clarify the prohibition of five commercial uses within Blue Run Park. The ordinance was posted on the city website on March 3rd and advertised in the River News and the Ocala Star banner. I think at this point, Andrew, um, you may comment on this. Yes, Mayor, I'd be happy to. I can hear you all loud and clear. I know there may be some issues hearing me, so I'll try to speak up and speak slowly. Uh, I don't have much to say about this particular item. This is the third time that council has seen it. There have been no changes to the substance of the ordinance, uh, exactly the same as council last reviewed it. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions? All right. Um, here again, now we're at public comment. Does anyone wants to make a public comment on this? It's your opportunity now. Yes. Mr. Bibber. This is a comment related to agenda item number two, correct? Bill Bibber, 9552 Southwest 192nd Court Road, Dunn Ellen. Uh, my comment, uh, public comment is to thank the council for staying with us. It's been a long ride. Mr. Mayor, thank you for staying with us. Um, it's a long time from 2008 when we promised we would have signs up and we would have an ordinance for Blue Run Park. And I think now we have one. Thank you, Andrew, for for um, staying with this project because it was a lot of uh, your time too, which I appreciate. Uh, also, um, the council's probably seen this. The sign that uh, has been approved by council, I think, and by Mandy, um, these signs are gonna be gone up as soon as we receive them. They've been ordered by Mandy. And thank you, Mandy, for staying with this. We went back and forth and um, Michelle about five times in 15 minutes, I think, to, to get these signs. So we're gonna have a nice sign. We're gonna have them posted in the park. People are gonna know what the rules are. And next step, uh, Mr. Mayor, as we've talked about, is we need to get enforcement, which we weren't able to do the last, you know, 10 years, but hopefully now we'll be able to get a plan for enforcement and we'll be able to be whole and we'll be able to enforce the no commercial use rule, which is gonna be great. So it's a, it's a big step for the city and I appreciate the cooperation that I've received and the uh, patience for me getting up here so many times, but thank you everybody. Well, I have a different sign from what I saw today, this morning. 
Do yes. you have a different sign? Yes, those are the permanent signs that will go up with uh, all of the park rules. Oh, okay. Right, the, the ones we have, the temporary signs out there right now is just a notice okay. of the commercial uh, use prohibition that becomes effective April 1st. Okay, the one I saw, okay. All right, thank you. And Mr. Bivert, equally, we appreciate your Absolutely. input and your expertise and uh, helping to be a uh, force and uh, directing us to, to do the things that need to be done. We, we recognize your years of service in uh, the park industry and is very lucky to have you to uh, uh, guide us through this menagerie, which it turned out to be. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> That's not totally true. <laughs> <laughs> e easy Good for try you though. to say. I'm not sure Andrew enjoyed the debate. Yes. <laughs> All right. Is there anyone else in attendance that would like to speak? Ms. Odom, anybody happen to be on? The, do we have anybody hooked up on Zoom at this time? We have one person hooked on Zoom, but we do not have a hand raised. Okay. Very good. All right. It is now 6.02 p.m. and I close the public hearing held to discuss ordinance 2022-02 and reopen the March 28th special city council meeting. We are now moving to agenda yeah. item number three. I think Louise has a comment. Oh no, I was yeah. just waiting to get to three. So I move ordinance 2022-02 be read by title only. Okay, let, let, let me just read what it is first. Okay. Uh, the, Final reading of ordinance 2022-02 Blue Run Park commercial use exceptions. And you are making the motion? I am, thank you. Okay, and the second? I would second it. Okay, we have a motion, a second. Any uh, discussion? None here. No discussion, Ms. Odom. Um, a vote or you read I need first? to read it first. You read it, okay, read yeah. it. Ordinance number ORD 2022-02, an ordinance of the city of Denellen, Florida, amending section 46-79 <coughs> of the code of ordinances of the city of Denellen to clarify the prohibition on commercial uses within Blue Run Park, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, providing for codification and providing for an effective date. Very good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. That was to Mayor. read it. That yes. was a motion to read by title only. Read by title now you'll only. need to, um, a separate motion to approve. Right. So now we have another motion. Uh, I need a motion for ordinance 2022-02 to be approved. So moved. Ms. Wolf, we have a second? I would second it. Ms. Cubbage, discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Explanation. <laughs> passes unanimously. So, Ms. Odom, what is left to be done with this? Nothing. Where is the confetti and balloons? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Ch champagne. <laughs> I'm not going to say no. The break of okay. bottle over the sign. <laughs> okay. So, um, as we normally do, we're going to have an opportunity for any council comments. Uh, what isn't on the agenda, I always like to have an opportunity if any of the department heads have something to say. And then we'll get ready to adjourn. So, is there anyone on the council that has any yes. updates? Council? Yes. Um, yeah, this is an update. Uh, because of the diligence of the City Council staff in their volunteer efforts on the weekend. I am sending you all to Belize on a cruise. Nice. <laughs> um, however, it's not April first, even. But I, I do, I do want to tell you that seeing you all there Saturday morning, and even Troy dropping in, donating those big heavy bolts to hold the paperwork down as the wind was blowing, that. Uh, you guys are just awesome, and I thank you. And uh, you added a lot of joy to the families who visited. Their kids had a blast with the dart game. 
The only suggestion is um, instead of throwing darts at wildlife, how about next year we make a big poster of invasive species, throw the darts at the Kogan grass and the armored catfish. <laughs> and I'll help you with that. Anything else? That's it. Okay, Miss Kenny? No, it's a happy day. It's a happy day for getting some things done. And I too appreciate it and uh, appreciate the work of Mr. Gibbert and his expertise, as you mentioned, uh, Mayor. So it's a good day. Miss Williams? Good day. I really have nothing. I was excited to attend the reception last uh, Friday night at Howard Academy for the our Olympian champions, Marion right. County, Aaron Jackson, Brittany Bow, and Joy Mantilla. And then the mayor and I attended the meeting with, of the Chapman residents last Thursday um, with FGUA about the moving from septic to sewer, but all that technical stuff I can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> Can you give us an update? What was accomplished by the meeting? What was, a, what was accomplished? Well, they gave us a timeline. Then they're going to do the work by phases. And then the um, authorization to go on to the residence properties, they had to sign those again because the first one expired. So, um, and then there will be another meeting, right? I think I meant to read over my notes, but yeah. I didn't before the meeting. So, so my, my memory of it was that. Um, there were timelines when they were going to do it in sections. Mm -hmm. It was also noted that if you signed up and allowed FGUA to do the conversion of the septic into the main wastewater, this is part of the project of shutting down the septic tanks in the areas that are polluting the Rainbow that. River. Um, uh, the residents, if they would sign up uh, in a timely manner, the conversion would be done free of charge. But if they, for whatever reason, decided they didn't want to sign up and wanted to sign up at a later date, when FGUA has moved to another section or whatever, you might have to pay yeah, a money. big fee. Mm -hmm. I remember it was $12,000. So uh, yeah, was they kind of like put it out there and asked people to sign up. I thought it was a very good meeting. and. Uh, we're finding that FGUA has been a good neighbor um, with us. They seem to be very receptive. And it was only about an hour, I think. Right. It's an hour. I've just got a, a few things to, uh, anything else? It's got a few things to uh, say. We had a, uh, a ribbon cutting of the uh, tunnel that connects oh, the yes. Donawan Trail to the Wipacuchi Trail. Uh, a week or so ago, uh, Troy was instrumental in setting up all the equipment mm -hmm. that was necessary for that. Chief, even though it was in Citrus County, uh, Chief <laughs> supplied a lot of the policing over there. I thought that was uh, uh, great. It was well attended. Uh, there was a threat of rain. So the uh, ceremony was actually done inside the tunnel, which turned out to be the perfect Location. Yes, it was. It really was. It was perfect. It was it was while you were sitting there, you could really take it all in. And it was well attended by commissioners from Marion County, commissioner from Citrus County, <coughs> uh, various state uh, representatives. A um, few people were asked to speak. I was asked to speak on behalf of Don Owen. And I would have to say, on all the times I've been asked to speak, that was one of my most pleasurable moments. That really felt good doing that. So right now, if you go to Blue Run Park, and Miss Williams, this is all about you. <laughs> I you want to go for a hike now. It's nearly 50 miles now. I think it's 47 miles. We'll be going 50 miles. <laughs> I have walked through the tunnel a couple of times. So, so quite, in, quite incredibly, we have a paved trail from Blue Run Park uh, that goes 47 miles. Dade City, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing, yeah. Yep. Mm. And uh, the plans are to additionally hook it into additional trails in the future, where we will be, Don Ellen will be the hub for the Florida trail system. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and the thing is, FDOT, who we are at odds with, 
uh, with the Turnpike, Northern Turnpike Extension, they were the, the main force and the, uh, came up with most of the money for the tunnel. So, you know, mm. uh, they, I guess you just have to point them in the right direction. Um, I did follow the uh, consensus of council where you directed me to write a letter to FDOT requesting a kickoff meeting or an update meeting in Dunellen or in the general area in Marion County. Uh, I wrote it to William Burke and we did get a response that he would take a look at it and take it to his superiors and see if it could be done. I pointed out to him that Citrus County was given that meeting. I pointed out to him that Levy County was given that meeting, but Marion County, which is actually in the crosshairs more than anybody with these roads hadn't been given a meeting. And I stress that uh, the distance to these meetings was cumbersome for people to travel to. Uh, I also emphasized to him that Marion County has a high percentage of uh, elderly people that uh, can't necessarily want to drive at night. These meetings went to into the darkness. I also emphasize to them that counting on people, uh, seniors to communicate with FDOT via computers, uh, which they've stressed that if you have any questions, just send us an email uh, and read our updates on, on our website that that isn't necessarily um, covering everybody. A lot of people don't have uh, the ability or access to that. So we'll see uh, uh, what happens with that. The great news is that the county has just responded to us this week. I think everyone got the letter that the county is uh, has verbally agreed to come up uh, with money for the uh, restroom. Uh, the way it is, is they have a, an original, basically $150,000 commitment from years past. They've agreed to come up with an additional 275,000 on top of that. Uh, the city has uh, committed the original 30,000 of, of the agreement we had with the county. And we came up with another 24,000 uh, from the 125 part. On top of that, FGUA, has contributed 25,000 and US Water has contributed 25,000. For the Blue Run Park bathrooms? Yes. And if that ain't enough, <laughs> I've got one more. <laughs> oh. uh, the county has also, on top of that, uh, grant, granted us through their programs, I don't understand what program they use, $25,000 toward a weather pavilion. So we got it going. So it kind of uh, falls on Troy. Troy's got to do some homework and find out where the plumbing is, uh, where the plumbing is and what was put in previously is going to have a lot to do with the expense. The closer the plumbing was put to the uh, proposed site of the restroom will reduce the cost. So um, we're, we're, we're getting it going. Uh, they're, they're planning on uh, if we can get our homework done, let the county know what bathroom. Right now, they're coming up with the money. What the county's saying. We're coming up with X amount of dollars. You guys decide with that money what kind of bathroom facility you want. Wow. If you want a real, real upscale one, that's up to you. If you want to use the money we have and have what we call a uh, a restroom that would be similar to one here or in our earning mills. The amount of money we have right now would probably cover that. So they're basically saying if uh, if you guys want a restroom that has the bells and whistles on it, have at it. Um, you just have to come up with the extra money yourself. So we are. It's quite a. It's been an amazing, uh, an amazing week. Uh, I want to publicly give uh, two commissioners that really pushed hard to make this happen. One is certainly Kathy Bryant, who represents us in the district. And then uh, Commissioner Carl Zalek 
has been huge as chairman, current chairman of the Marion County Commissioners to uh, uh, invite me and to allow me to speak to the commissioners and give me pretty much unfretted time to explain my points. And he, he, he has been uh, amazing. Uh, and he's even um, met with me over coffee one morning to, to just ask me some questions and try to get more information what this is all about. So it's been a, uh, it's been a great week and uh, that's my report. For the county of G. I was just trying to think. You said the county of G. U. A. U. S. Water. There was some. Yeah. Okay. The way it is right now, new money. New money. County is going to come up with two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. Okay. Um. F. G. A. is coming up with twenty-five. Okay. U. S. Water is coming up with twenty-five. We have a combination of 12. We are coming up with about 35, 12,000 left over plus the 23, right? Um, and the county's coming up with 25,000 for the weather pavilion. Okay. And right now it still hasn't been signed by the governor, but apparently representative Harding has worked hard and others in the county to include two and a half million dollars in the state budget to start with the uh, bike trail, pedestrian bridge. Pedestrian bridge okay. new bike trail. So okay. that still has to be signed by the, is that correct, Fanny? Yes. So that still has to be signed by the governor. If it stays in the bill, on top of everything else I said, we'll have that project funded and uh, we'll see how that goes. So Dun Ellen is, you knew it five years ago and what Dun Ellen will be five years from now will be a much different place. And hopefully um, we're showing everybody that we're concerned about the rivers, our ecotourism and everything's being done in the right way up to this point. So, uh, Everybody done? It's I just can't believe the traffic in Dunellen right now. I, I just can't. It, it, it's. <laughs> I, I have a question for you. Yeah, one thing before I forget, Mandy. We um, now that we have decided on the uh, police, uh, post, the Soul Harbor Church sale, we do need to start discussing about a possible location for the. Uh, uh, proposed police building. So please put that on the workshop uh, so we can start coming up with some ideas. Uh, anything staff knows or uh, comes up with, including um, the Masonic uh, property, the property on Powell Road. Uh, you know, this is time for staff to do a little homework on behalf of council and give us some suggestions and some ideas. Okay. You keep looking at me like, and another thing, and another <laughs> thing. And another thing. <laughs> All right. So let's let's just go down the line and see if uh, if our department ha heads have much to say. Georgia, let's start with you for a change. <laughs> you got anything? Anything you want to tell us? What's going on? I mean, we. Um... <clears throat> The most important thing for me right now is that we we are finally uh, we finally have an assistant who is fully trained, um, and um, she's working very hard to get everything back up to date. And we're trying to get everything under control again. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Troy. Nothing to add. Your full report. Okay, uh, Ms. Odom. I do not have anything. You want to report on the meeting to uh, Blue Run Park residents? That was a uh, super meeting. Yeah. yeah. Um, the mayor and I did attend after our day over at Marion County days. Um, we came back that afternoon, had a 
quarterly meeting with the residents of Blue Run uh, or Blue Cove division okay. out there. We talked to them about the paving project that's uh, gone out to bid and the work will start over there. Gave them an update of all the other projects that we're working on around the city. We got to meet the new uh, elected president of the association, all the uh, staff members that, that are on, or all the uh, elected officials on their association. And they're very excited about the changes coming to the city. And they had some amazing food there. So, uh, but it was, it was very good to attend that. All right, thank you. And Ms. Odom? Jake, do you have anything? Well, you want to discuss the meeting? Uh, sure. Um, the meeting we had last week? Yes. Well, I think we should wait till Wednesday when we have our next scheduled meeting. Um, do you have the first? This Wednesday. Uh -huh. Well, come on up. Chief, come on up come and... On. Uh, I was talking about the meeting we have this Wednesday with the mayor. Right. But go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I was ahead. talking about the one for Blue Run Park. Okay. Yeah. Chief, use your discretion and just you know tell us what we need to know. We had a meeting with Mandy and Jim Coyard about Blue Run Park. And Chief, how did it go? Uh, <clears throat> we discussed mostly how we're going to enforce the rules at Blue Run Park, uh, some of the things that we can and cannot do. And uh, <clears throat> uh, basically, between the county, who sent letters out several months ago, uh, explaining this was going to probably come about. The letter that Mandy sent out, and this is to all the people who have uh, been issued passes by the county. And I also, uh, with the same list, I called everybody on the list, and uh, nobody basically wanted to attend the meeting. Uh, but I did call one person who even the county felt it was going to be a violator and explained to them what would happen. And they politely told me that they had going to sell the business and it'd be up to the new owners to decide what they're going to do. Uh, so basically we are prepared for Monday, uh, for Friday. Uh, of course, the tubing season doesn't open yet, but that doesn't mean some of these other uh, people who will be trying to violate the new policy on commercial. And uh, Shane and I both have talked with our officers, and uh, we've also talked with the clerk's office. Uh, they are prepared for the new citations, the clerk's office for the uh, Marion County. So the police department is ready. Anything else on normal business you want to talk to us about? Uh, well, only thing I can say, I can't say much, is we did have a uncommonly young person to die within yes. the city limits. Yes. And uh, it is being investigated. investigated. And, uh, but that's about all I can say about that at this time. But very young person in the 40s. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any, Any questions, questions yeah, from the council? Sure. Come well, on. You, you can't yeah. share any information, so just we got no questions. <laughs> 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 the questions I want to ask, you can't answer, so. <laughs> ask me something else. Got to do your job. Yeah. I understand. Yes. OK, Chief, thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, Ms. Odom? Just to add to that, just to let you all know that there is a, um, a notice on our Facebook page for the police department. We haven't actually gotten our, our city police department Facebook page ready to go yet, 
but it is on the police department's Facebook page and on the city's website, um, Chamber of Commerce website, and we have posted signs. We have six signs posted at the park. Um, a notice effective April 1st, you know, the commercial use prohibition. So I think we've covered as many bases as we possibly can. In addition to that, I reached out to Sean at the Riverland today and asked him if he would write a piece in this week's paper. Mm -hmm. um, and I sent him all the information and I shared that with Austin Miller as well with the Ocala Star Banner. So maybe he'll get something in the banner this week to get even more notice out there. So I don't know that we could really. There's much more we could have done. I saw that on Facebook, the police department, so I shared it on my page. Good. Did you also maybe touch on the Marion County days, the, the booth and everything we had, what your impression of that was? It was amazing. Um, we had everyone at City Hall came out um, to help, Troy. We all met up at Public Works about seven o'clock Saturday morning. Went over there uh, to the McPherson complex. We had two tents set up. Um, I had a video presentation that I did, just sort of a, a running video uh, of some footage that was provided to me by several people. Um, Sandra Marafino, Bill River, um, Bert Snow, <coughs> and um, Linda Walensky, and Gordon Hart um, all, all you know, contributed to that, which was very nice. And RRC also provided us with a lot of pamphlets um, and uh, educational materials to hand out. We handed out 100 bags with that kind of stuff in it. Um, we had a, a magnetic dartboard with pictures of the Rainbow River and different animal species and had magnetic darts. And thanks to Troy and Michelle, this thing was just homemade. It was like a piece of a filing cabinet. <laughs> and with the, the pictures pasted to it, and the kids just love getting to throw the darts and pick a prize. We had little goodies for them, and so it we we stayed we stayed pretty crowded all day um, mm. at our booth. Big success. Saw some pictures. Yeah. All right. Your report finished. Um, before we make a motion for adjournment, is. Um, Anyone else in attendance want to give us some closing comments or anything? Okay. Miss Odom, no one on Zoom still raising their hand? Okay, can we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? What a great time. Thank you very much.